My name is Jenna Rose Dahl. I'm here in Minnesota. Um, and we are excited to bring you this session today. Um, when we created this session, we asked a lot of the teachers that we work with, what are some cool engaging ideas, you know, that you have for classroom activities? Um, and we're able to put together a dozen different activities in different categories for you to use in your classroom. Um, one of the really neat parts of our job at Burlington English is we get to drive around from school to school and meet with really awesome educators across the states. Um, so we're really excited to bring you all of these different ideas today. And um, I, in my area of Burlington English, work mostly in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Um, and I have with me my awesome colleague, Angela, who is a Minnesota native. <laughs> yeah, good morning, everybody. I'm Angela Donlin, a long time, uh, career long ESL, adult ESL teacher with a little GED sprinkled in there as well. Um, I live in Owatonna and um, I don't have Minnesota as my BE territory, but Jenna Rose and I hang out a lot together and work very closely together. I work mostly in Nebraska and Iowa, <clears throat> but it's really a treat to be able to be invited back here to present and give you and share some really great ideas with you all today. Awesome. Do, you want, do you want to kick us off, Jenna Rose? Yeah, so we can go ahead and get started. So, you know, if we were in person, we would bring donuts to this session, <laughs> um, but as a good little 9 a.m. wake up, we've got some beautiful donuts to look at here. And this is an interactive session. So what we're gonna ask you to do is either to unmute or to type in the chat, you're going to come up with a, a creative description of which donut we're going to go behind. Um, behind each of these donuts is one of those dozen um, activities. Um, so go ahead, think of a donut. Um, and whoever types it first in the chat will go behind that donut. Zebra. zebra. Okay, so we got zebra <laughs> from Mary Beth. I think it's going to be this one. Um, though this one's a little zebra y too. I think with the white, probably this donut. So I'm going to click on this donut. And you've chosen our digital literacy activity donut. Um, so these are some different activities that you can do to work on some digital literacy skills in your classroom. Um, one fun idea is having students do a culture based media project. Um, so whether that involves, you know, everything from building a PowerPoint and doing a presentation for their class. Um, or whether that means, you know, maybe you use Google Slides and you just teach students how to copy and paste one picture that they want to share um, into a shared PowerPoint. Um, there's a lot you can do around technology and social media um, to let students share about themselves, their own background and interests. Um, you could come up with a theme, you know, let's share about art in your home country um, or, you know, your favorite dinner in your home country um, to really get students using those digital literacy skills to just do things like share pictures, um, copy and paste images, things like that. Um, another really fun digital literacy activity to do is teaching students how to write a review. Um, so I'm sure you've all done it, um, gone on to Google to leave, you know, a five star review or a two star review, um, depending on, you know, maybe your experience at a local restaurant. Um, this can be a really great thing to do with students because it connects them um, in a different way to their community, to the restaurants and services that they have in their community. Um, and it, it's a really great way to open up that discussion too of what restaurants do you go to? What stores do you go to? Um, and showing them how to leave feedback, um, you know, and use their voice um, to, to share their opinion about a product or a business, um, especially if it's local, can be a cool project to do with your students. Um, another digital literacy activity that can be really fun is having students all write comments on a picture or video. Um, so if you maybe make a class social media page, whether it's, you know, with Google Classroom or if you have 
I've seen people do just a class Facebook page that everyone uh, joins. Um, you know, maybe we're going to use a grammar skill that we practiced in the lesson yesterday um, to write a comment on this picture or video that you post. Um, this can also get students ready for when they do things like join an online college class, because a lot of those involve writing responses to a prompt. Um, so those are some fun digital literacy activities you can use in your classroom. And I'll go back to this main screen um, in just a minute here. Um, I also just want to point out that we've got these videos in Burlington. So if you have Burlington, um, this is a new update. Um, they've added activities to do after these videos. Um, and these are just short little digital literacy videos that model how to do different tasks for students. Um, and they can be used by any level because they don't have a lot of spoken word. All right, so we're back at the main screen. Let's have someone choose our next donut. Yellow grid, lower right corner. All right, Obi was ready. I like it. <laughs> All righty, I'm getting to my notes on that one. Is that a me one, Jenna Rose? That is. All of the ones that have this like brown red title are yeah. me ones. <laughs> I know we had to come up with a way to differentiate like who's doing what slide because this presentation um, happens in a different order every time we do it. <laughs> Keeps right. it really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so activities to integrate skills. This is one of my favorite ideas because I love to see how I can, uh, when I'm teaching it always, how I can make, let's say, a reading lesson into a writing lesson or a listening lesson as well. So building on the skills, integrating more than one skill in a lesson. So a couple of ways we came up with that, um, that you might wanna do this um, is first of all, a dictation, right? Seems pretty simple, but we can make it um, so that we can integrate skills. So we can read something, a word or a phrase out loud, have students write what they hear, and then take another step and have the students take turns reading um, either their, their own words that they come up with from uh, the lesson you're teaching, something in the same context, um, or uh, even like a telephone game, I think is really fun, where you have um, somebody dictate quietly to the person next to them a word they come up with, pass that along, you know, the old telephone game, and uh, see if the, at the very end, um, the person who is last created or recreated the original word or phrase. Um, using text-based scripts, audio, visually, visual scripts creatively. Um, in Burlington, we do have scripts of all of the audio and video that is integrated into the lessons. And so um, printing those out, you can use those before uh, the lesson. Um, you know, working on prediction. Um, you can use them in the middle of the lesson. Most of the lessons do have ideas embedded for how to use them in the middle of the lesson or even afterwards as a sort of an assessment. Um, <clears throat> stand up if you have ever. Okay, so again, this is, students love games, right? They go crazy over games. So for example, um, stand up if you've ever eaten in our theme today, a maple donut. How about everybody who's eaten a maple donut, stand up or put a yes in the chat. <laughs> They're not my favorite. I was oh, okay. my favorite. That's is that why the, yeah. the, I was in Missouri doing this presentation and I said, everybody stand, it was in person. Everybody stand up. Anyone who's eaten a Bismarck, stand up. And nobody stood up. And my colleague, April, who's from Nebraska, said, I think that's a Minnesota thing. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it is. Nobody knew what a Bismarck was. Anyway. OK. <clears throat> Are we back to the donut grid or the All donut right. page, General? We're back. I know. Love a Bismarck. OK, so who can oh, choose our oh, next oh. donut? All right. Or <laughs> Julie. All right, someone describe another donut and we'll go to that. We'll go behind it and see what activities we can suggest there. 
in the chat. Purple. Purple can't. Purple. Purple. Okay, it's purple is super cute. Okay. Um, so we've got some grammar activities that you can do in your class behind this purple donut. Um, so one idea is just to write sentences on the board and have students find the parts that need to be corrected. Um, of course, you're going to want to pre-teach this grammar. You don't just want to write a bunch of sentences with, with grammar mistakes that hasn't been pre-taught to the students. Um, one thing that you can do to kind of make anything a competition is setting a timer, um, breaking your class up into two groups and, and making it a race. Um, so that can be kind of terrible for learners like me who need a little time to process. <laughs> um, so it depends on your, your class and how they like to learn. Um, you can also do some mixing and matching. So similar to what Angela was talking about, using our, our scripts creatively. Um, if you've got an audio clip um, and you're having students listen to it, you might even cut that up and have them rearrange it as they hear you know, the correct sentences in the right order. Um, we've also got those role play conversation kind of prompts. So that would be another great thing to do that with. Um, <clears throat> another fun activity is doing some annotation with students. Um, so preparing you know, a passage, a paragraph um, with those grammatical errors, especially of course, the ones that you've pre-taught. Um, and having students identify all of the errors that they can spot. Okay, so we've got one example for you here. This is taken from our um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde book. So we'll do, we'll do a little race. Let's see how many errors you can find. Um, once you think you found all the errors, put your number in the chat. How many errors? Do you see in this passage? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're getting some responses. Yep. Someone says eight, nine, getting a lot of eights and nines. Ooh. I don't do well under pressure. This, this one would trip me up. I know. Um, so here's, here's our answer slide. So we have bears. Um, we needed a capital for, for hide. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so great job for folks who found all of those grammatical errors. Yeah, it's a super fun, easy thing to do. Um, and you can, you can do this with any, any type of paragraph. Um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, the same old thing. Um, we can be pretty creative and bring in some fun, you know, classics even to our classes sometimes. All right. I promised Mary that we would go to the chocolate with sprinkles this time. Ooh, I like that one. That one's cute. All right. All right. We're headed there. <laughs> there we go. Warm up activities. All right. So a couple of, you know, uh, creative ideas that we came up with for warm up activities, connection questions. Ask students something that's related to the theme you're working on, which again, seems pretty simple, but I love this with adult data. We all know that attendance can be, oh, what's a good word for it? <laughs> Unpredictable. So, um, you know, somebody may have been gone the day before, missed part of a lesson. Warm-up activities are an amazing opportunity to recap without losing ground. So, um, you know, um, uh, tapping into the knowledge that the students who were there already acquired the day before. So connection questions are wonderful. So exam for, for an example, um, if you're gonna talk about books, you're talking about books. Um, you can ask, what's your favorite book? What was the last book you read? 
what kind of book do you prefer to read? So depending on the level, you can um, um, modify the question, right? To fit that level. Again, great idea for a multi-level group. Ask similar, ask a question and a theme at different levels. Okay. Um, you can write a couple of, le of questions on a board that is gonna introduce the, the lesson. So instead of a review of it in four, you can introduce something new, whatever your next theme is, um, by writing some questions on the board and asking students um, to predict, right? So for example, if you're going to talk about books, you could write, what's your favorite book? What's the last book you read? You can write some of those same words, but also you could do something that we call, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, a mind map. And so um, let's take our theme today, bakery, okay? So in the chat, put, a, put the word, the first word that comes to your mind or one or two words, so word association here, okay? Uh, when you see bakery or hear bakery, flour, bread, yum, cake, donut, sugar, apron, nice milk, buttercream, yeah, carbs. <laughs> the the name of a bakery. <laughs> Gluten. Oh, yeah, great. Good. Okay. Awesome. So then you would go ahead and attach these to the word bakery. Maybe we can show on, on um, our lesson plans. For every lesson in Burlington English, we have a lesson plan that accompanies it. Don't know if this is, um, if you can see this very well, but every lesson does include a, a warm up activity idea. And for those of you who do teach with Burlington, you'll know what an in class lesson looks like. And you don't see the warm up activity on the actual in class lesson. So you'll always go to the, the, um, lesson plan to find warm up activities. And here's an example of a mind map. This one is around the idea of personal information. So something you can have on the board when your students get come in in the morning or afternoon or evening. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right, so doing a mind map online. Yeah, that's a good question. So oh, we have, uh -huh. um, a lot of times I find it easiest to just open up Microsoft Word, yeah. um, to type in the word, um, and then to just type in the other words that students um, say, you know, to go along with that. I don't use a whiteboard on Zoom very often. I know that there is one. Um, that's okay. another idea. If you're, if you're, I don't know about the other platforms, but um, Jamboard, okay, yeah, Jamboard board could work well. Someone mm -hmm. said, read, think, write, has mind map interactives. This is, we learn so much from everyone here. There's just, it's amazing. Oh my gosh. We were actually talking about this right before when we were preparing for the presentation. <laughs> and I said, no, oh, feel comfortable doing it. But yeah, exactly. That's a great, great thought. How to do it um, virtually. Definitely. All right, okay, who's gonna choose our next donut? Um, let's see. Yeah, go ahead and describe the, uh, the donut you want us to look behind. Teak, teak. Maybe teal? Teal, I bet it's teal. Okay, I'll go behind this one. All right, you've chosen numbers and graphs, um, which is, one of my least favorite subjects as a student. <laughs> I was terrified of anything close to math, um, but making it visual and adding some movement can make it a little bit easier for your, your math adverse folks. Um, so one fun activity that you can do along with numbers and graphs is having students um, use specific charts to represent what they do with their free time. Um, so you could do this by, you know, showing a calendar or a day broken down hour by hour um, and having students fill in hour by hour what they do um, and maybe say, okay, if you have one hour of free time in your day, where is it and how do you spend it? Um, this can also be really great to just mingle around and ask people, what do you do with your free time um, to get to know their classmates? Um, and what they do when they've got some leisure time. Um, another fun thing, so doing some 
warm-ups to numeracy activities. Um, you can do everything from, you know, having students um, stand up. Everyone get in line for who is the, the first, who was the first to come to class versus who was the last to come to class. Um, who um, was born in January versus who was born in December. Um, getting folks moving around um, and organizing according to category can be a really great way to then show them how to visually represent that, you know, as a chart. Um, and another fun thing um, with students building a graphic organizer. Um, so for some things like doing um, some activities around time management, <laughs> Um, this is an example um, of just, you know, a simple calendar that you could use with your students um, to have them block off that time and visually represent um, the hours throughout their day. Um, we also found this kind of neat um, section in one of the Burlington lessons on, it's in the hotel English course. Um, so this one actually has info as far as like how many rooms this hotel has and all of their inventory equipment. Um, and then some different events that are going to be happening at this hotel, whether it's a wedding um, or the historical society coming through. Um, and then we have students, you know, go through, whoops, sorry, I got out of that one. Um, have students go through and actually mark off, you know, which room should which group go into. Um, mm -hmm. Really helpful for planning a conference too, I'm sure. Um, I heard next year we're, we're gonna be in person. That sounds exciting. Um, um, I promised, uh, let's see, who was it? Oh, <laughs> Julie, she said gooey green. And I just think that, that description so much. I said, yeah, we're going to gooey green. I like it. Okay, this is the gooey green. Here we go. Okay, so you've chosen some pronunciation practice activities. Um, so teaching pronunciation, um, there's a couple of fun things that we've got here that you can try with your students. Um, one is having some fun with word stress. Um, so when you're teaching your students how to find the stress in a word, um, we can do things where we integrate clapping, um, drawing bubbles, or using rubber bands. Um, so I learned this in that pronunciation study circle that Andrea Eckelberger did um, a couple of years ago now for me anyway. Um, but my students were really struggling specifically with word stress. Um, so what we did is we practiced things like clapping. So when we were looking at the syllables in a word, we might say, okay, let's clap for each syllable. So if we're looking at the word along, we might say, along and we would clap twice um, and of course adding some movement um, really also helps our brain remember that word um, i also um, did the same thing with rubber bands so when we're looking at how this word is stressed along um, we see that there's two syllables uh and then the second part we have is long um, so with my rubber band we might have it closed for uh and then open it up long to, to emphasize which part of that word is really being stressed. Um, I'm just Minnesota gonna hop is a fun one to do. Minnesota. <laughs> um, so I'll pop over here. I'm just in one of the Burlington student lessons that has vocabulary. Um, this one's about um, safety driving. Um, and I've got a little annotation toolbar here. So I can do some things with this too if I want to really visually represent the words for students. Um, maybe we're practicing dangerous. Um, so we might say, okay, we have a line between dangerous. Um, when we're looking at these syllables with our students, dangerous. Um, then we might use our bubble here. Um, we can get a circle shape, say, okay, which part of this word has a stress? Dangerous. Do we put it over the first part? Dangerous. Um, do we say dangerous? Um, 
And you can use, you know, all these little buttons to undo or to clear. Um, but that would be a good way to really visually represent just with using those little lines and little bubbles um, over any vocabulary word. Ask either of us any time about that annotation bar. <clears throat> we can we can give you a private tour of it. It's super fun. People were asking for that for a long time. Definitely, yeah. That was added based on teacher feedback, and I think it shows. Yeah. Um, just also pointing out when students are doing their recording in Burlington, it is tracking their speech. Um, any mistakes they make, and then it's going to give them targeted pronunciation practice that'll show them how do you move your mouth and lips to produce this sound. All right, we're back at our main page here. So who's got our next donut? Um, no one claimed it yet. Let's see who can describe one for us. Hard to remember which ones we've done already. I know. <laughs> pink stripe? Did we do pink stripe? stripe? Pink stripe. I don't yeah. think we have. All right. So we've got multiple response activities. Um, so some activities that you can do to get students responding, you know, in more than one way. We don't always just want to ask a question of our students and have, you know, the one student always answer um, orally first. Um, it's great to give our students some different ways that they can respond. Um, so one strategy is just doing this whip around where we're going to ask our students a question and then we're going to set our timer for maybe one minute, maybe even 30 seconds. Um, and then we're going to have everyone share their answer as we go around the room. So everyone's sharing their answer quickly. Um, <clears throat> and you could definitely have them do this in the chat also. Um, one method I learned at Summer Institute last year um, for doing this in the chat is having everyone type their answer, but they don't, they don't hit enter until the teacher says. Mm -hmm. So maybe you set the timer for one minute, it gives everyone time to think and type, and then everyone hits enter at the same time, which lets everyone get a chance to share. Um, in person or even virtually, um, giving every student a small whiteboard and marker and have students write answers on their board and everyone hold up their whiteboard. Um, I especially found this helpful, you know, working in a multi-level class and I had those three students who were always ready to answer. Um, and some of my lower level students were like really ready to let them answer. <laughs> um, so it was really great to get everyone engaged. Um, it also, I think is helpful because you can write out your thoughts before, you know, maybe you say them. Um, and here are think, pair, share, just very, very classic. Um, having students write their response, um, then work with a partner and share that before they share it out with the whole class. Um, one thing I'll just point out too, this is at the end of many, many um, questions in Burlington, but even if you don't have Burlington, a really great thing to add to um, your lessons is a now you kind of a question. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're talking about this topic, do you do any of these things? Um, how do you do this? Um, really bringing it back to the student and their experience. Robert requested um, blueberry sprinkle. Let's go to blueberry sprinkle. Oh, I like it. It could be this one or it could be this one. Mm, donut confusion. Okay, I'll, I'll go for this one. Okay. The, the top blueberry, unless. Oh, the top, okay. Oh, with doo doo. Oh my God, Teresa, that is the most creative. Um, <laughs> this one's an Angela slap. <laughs> well, we went to career exploration, right? Not the lower left swimming pool with doo doo. That's we'll funny. go to the we'll go to the swimming pool with doo doo next. How about that? <laughs> Deal. Okay, career exploration activities. Um. So how do how to make this fun? How to incorporate career exploration into our language learning or our ABE? Um, <laughs> I'm laughing about that. Doo doo. Um, I know. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> pick a stick because they write a name of different careers on popsicle sticks. Have students choose 
to stick and research the information about that career. My colleague, Sue, who is actually your, your um, customer representative in Minnesota, um, was not able to come today, but he has a great idea from one of you. I don't know where he got this idea, Jenna Rose, maybe you know, but I'd never heard it before he shared it. He, um, one of the teachers that, that shared this went around to local businesses and, and got pens. Pens with, a, you know, a lot of businesses give away free pens. So um, even if it's swag, you know, it doesn't have to be a pen, you could have a swag bucket. Um, and have, <clears throat> excuse me, have students, you could do a lot of stuff with a swag bucket, have students research careers, you could practice just, um, you could uh, practice just pronunciation of the careers that might be, you could speculate, what might this be? What do you think this is, this, this insurance company, um, prior to actually doing the research, right? Generating vocabulary, et cetera. You could invite guest speakers from the community to talk about um, the lesson topic that you'd like them to talk about. So example, inviting a nurse to discuss a visit to the hospital. And of course, in this digital age, we've all learned how accessible we are via the, uh, the online platform, right? So um, <clears throat> I've been hearing teachers inviting um, representatives who are in Washington to visit their classroom because we can do that. They can visit your classroom on a screen, right? Um, you can really open the world to, um, to your classroom. And um, I love that for the community connection as well. But invite people who have different jobs to come and speak to your students. Um, and of course, mock interviews. Uh, role playing a job interview. It's kind of tricky. We do have a really great um, embedded, um, I would call it sort of series of learning about job interviews in our career exploration and soft skills course. So um, listening to it, um, watching it, it's a video um, series of videos of a, of a job interview. So preparing, huh, um, getting ready for that interview, watching that mock interview, um, kind of picking it apart into pieces. Really can destigmatize and take some of the fear out of it. Let me see, Danielle had a comment. It would be a good idea around election time or for students interested in voting. Definitely agree. Yes, absolutely. I even, one of my favorite things, I had someone from Minneapolis Recycling come and visit my class and she I brought love. she brought neat props, like all these compressed pans and students took pictures with them and she, Walk them through the whole process of what recycling is. Um, and I learned through that experience that none of my students recycled or had, um, had an idea of why it was important. Um, mm -hmm. So we spent a lot more time on that. Um, but having someone from Minneapolis like recycling come and visit, she was able to say, oh, you live in this building. I know where this recycling is. It's around, it's back by the alley. It's this green bin. <laughs> So cool. Amazing. <laughs> That's very cool. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Oh, okay. We need doo doo pool for our next doo -doo donut. Pool. I remember. <laughs> I'm, oh, that one. Never gonna, I'm never going to look at that donut the same. <laughs> Creative writing. All right. So using literature, movies, or TV shows as the foundation for your creative writing assignment and class work. Um, and, you know, different types of writing, bring, bring, use your imagination. You can use, um, I love this. I love, because I was always struggling to make writing interesting and not so, so dreaded, I guess. Um, some of my students have such a hard time with it. So alternative ending. Once you've, um, you know, once you've finished, the reading passage, the book, watch the movie, rewrite the ending um, so that it turns out differently. Um, do we have a, a slide for the alternate ending? I think we do. Me too, we? yeah. So in our readers, um, this is from Jekyll and Hyde, um, just a little, a fun example of, um, 
of an alternate ending. So the, at the beginning, it says the first ending, the original ending, Henry Jekyll is unable to find a chemist to recreate the chemical that prevents him from turning into Edward Hyde. He kicks it, he not, having trouble reading. He locks himself away in his room as he awaits his demise. All right. Alternative ending, after searching endlessly, Henry Jekyll is finally able to recreate the chemical that, that keeps Hyde at bay. With a team of the top chemists he could find, he creates enough chemical to last him a lifetime. Edward Hyde would never hurt anyone again. <laughs> like the idea of making something sad happy too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, um, character study, always fun take a deep dive into a, a favorite character. Students could choose their favorite character um, and, you know, uh, write about their qualities, their motivations. Again, all of this I can see adapted to a very basic level too. <clears throat> um, not as deep a dive or not as complex a question or a topic, but you can still, you can still use literature with basic, basic level students, right? Um, I like, choosing a character that you didn't like. I think that's kind of fun too. And writing about them. Um, Kristen says, great idea, even after a short video clip or dialogue, predict what happens too. Yeah, I love, I love prediction. I just think it's so much fun. People feel so victorious when they're right. <laughs> and and the, the, another idea is, you know, taking a new perspective. So, tell the story from the point of view of the victim or one of the supporting characters that we don't hear much about. Develop it from that side, what those characters are seeing. Super fun. All right. Awesome. Yes, Christine, literature is great to teach story structure, which is a good stepping stone to other text structures as students move forward. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. oh, the True Stories Plus series with ironic and funny endings. Yes. Ooh, wow. yeah. I, I had a teacher also mention that she was having students read like Dear Abby columns and they really got excited about all the drama and had some really great discussions oh, <laughs> about that's... issues they were writing in about. Oh, okay. Orange with stripes. Yeah, very fair. That is funny because uh, yeah. people love the soap operas, right? Yes. <laughs> really fun to describe. All right, so you've chosen some vocabulary activities. Um, so some vocabulary activities that you can do with your students here. Um, one of them is really just playing a categories game. Um, so you can have students, you know, take out their notebooks or a page, piece of paper. Um, and draw six columns on them. And then you can give them some headings for each column. So maybe we're gonna put verbs here or food here or names here. And then as a teacher, you choose a letter <clears throat> and you're gonna have students write as many words as they can in each category. Um, so we play this as a game, right? Categories, it's a fun thing to do um, and get folks thinking about their vocabulary words that they know. Um, Another fun game to play with students around vocabulary is hot seat. Um, so I'll just go to our next slide here because we have the rules written out for hot seat. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> so this is um, on the third page of every Burlington lesson plan. They give you an expansion worksheet and also give you an extra 30 minute activity that you can do if you wanna expand the lesson. Um, and do more with that content. Um, so this one is a hot seat activity, definitely not something Burlington created. Um, you can use it, you know, with any curriculum that you've got, um, but you're going to divide your students up into two teams. So the teams are all together, they're facing the board, and then you're gonna take two chairs and face it towards the teams. So the, the chairs have their back to the board um, you're going to put one person from each team in those chairs, and then you're going to write one of the words. It could be the vocabulary words that you're working on in that lesson um, on the board. And then the teams are going to help their team representative guess that word 
Um, they can, you know, mime out that word. They can use synonyms or antonyms. They can't spell the word or they can't say it sounds like this. Um, and then the first person in that hot seat to guess the correct vocabulary word gets a point for their team. Um, so you can just write, you know, one point on the board. Um, it can get super competitive and loud and, and really, really fun to play this kind of a game with your students. Um, I would always also add rules for games like this, like we're only going to speak English during this time. Um, and, um, you know, students would get really competitive and tattle on <laughs> each other. So we would practice <laughs> words like wait or maybe or I think, um, you know, to help them. <laughs> <laughs> shouting out answers um yeah it uh, is a fun another um oh yeah go ahead sorry there's a funny leg <laughs> oh, i apologize sorry i was commenting beth just said she really likes this version of hot seat definitely um another thing you can do a little bit less wild in your classroom is using a knowledge rating scale um, to have students rate how familiar they are with each word. Um, so this is actually taken from the Atlas website. Um, they've got a nice article about vocabulary activities with students. Um, so some Minnesota teachers came up with this knowledge rating scale where you're going to write the vocabulary word here, and then you're gonna have students check whether they've never heard this word before. Maybe they heard it, but they're, they don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. an idea and they heard this word it has something to do with you know um health care um maybe they actually they know the word they know its meaning and they can use it um we also have those translations in burlington for vocabulary so it can be nice to write those out um and this is something that you could do you know individually with students but you could also um write this up on the board and then have everyone take a marker and everyone come up to the board and write and rank each word. So then you could kind of see as a whole class, oh, many of my students have never heard of this word or many of them really, really know this vocabulary word. Um, can be a great way to kind of assess your students, you know, vocabulary too. Um, Jenna, um, Rose, uh, Jenna Rose, Alicia wants to know where she can find this yeah. on Atlas site. Do you know? Oh. I, I can I, share it. Jenna, I, I'm working on it. I'll get the link in for everybody, okay? Thank Wonderful. you, Penny. Thank you, Penny. Awesome. All right, where is our next donut? Um, let's see. Rosemary chose the um, first row last on the right. Oh, wait, which one? First row last on the right. So I think it's like the brown and tan kind oh, of sure. tiger stripe, maybe. Okay. Okay, Rosemary. You picked games. Always a favorite. Um, I'm sure that you all could add a million, million games. And so while I'm talking about what we've come up with, please put your favorite game in the chat, your favorite game that you play with students. Um, we chose just three for now. Um, one is the fly swatter. So um, this is one that I, I, I love, I love the fly swatter. So you're writing words or putting photos on the board um, or just even around the room, I think spreading it out is super fun too because people bump into each other and all of that. And then you send students to um, the location where things are. Okay. Um, and they swat whenever um, the teacher calls out the word or phrase. Okay. Looks like we're at time, Jenna Rose. We have a specific <clears throat> Yeah, we so are. We, okay. Yeah, about, yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting there. So um, because we're about, at that time, um, what we'll do here is um, I'm going to bring up a slide that we have. Um, let's see, I might just scooch to the end. Um, this is a, a hefty presentation, a little bit different each time. Um, if you would like 
to get a copy of this presentation. Um, we're going to put this link for you in the chat. Um, this is just a short form that you can fill out with your contact info, and then we'll email you a copy of this presentation. Um, Jenna Rose? Yeah. Will you also put it up on the, into SCED? The, the, sure. the SCED um, that we're all using uh, for the conference, that's, um, that's where we're asking people to put, and I can help you oh, with sure. that if you need that as well. Definitely, yeah, we can do that, no problem. Um, and then um, we've got our contact info here, so feel free to reach out to us with any questions at all. We're happy to help. Um, and thanks so much for joining our session today. It's been great getting to go through some of these ideas with you and hearing all of your cool ideas too. That's really the best part of our job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for playing. <laughs>